Welcome to the Contractor Success Forum. Today we are going to discuss how profit first equals people first for contractors in our contracting business. And who do we have with us today to talk about that? We have Wade Carpenter with Carpenter and Company CPAs. And we have Stephen Brown with McDaniel Whitley Bonding and Insurance Agency. And I'm Rob Williams, author of The Pumpkin Plan for Contractors. And Companies Iron Gate Entrepreneurial Support Systems. And today, what does that mean to us, guys? How is profit first the same thing as people first? What what's your No, I mean you're saying you put profit first, right? Yes, we put profit first in order to make people first. Because without cash and money, you can't take care of your people. You know, a lot of people take the title profit first and they think of greed they think you're trying to be greedy and i remember a story from a few years back is a friend of mine that's a mastery member of the profit first professionals and she told me a story about when she first started rolling this out to her clients and one of her clients that never read the book called her up after seeing her advertisement and said do you know what this sounds like you it sounds like you're prioritizing taking your profit over what we do and that's not what it's all about at all. Yeah, because we actually had an employee get a letter very similar to that from, from somebody who probably had not read the book, I think either. And they said profit first equals greed. And so there's an article, with the title of that, that profit first equals greed question mark. But the point was that's not greed, that profit first is just being a responsible way of handling anything. And I'll actually just real quickly read this letter where this whole article came from was a letter from an actual employee responded to somebody in response to somebody saying that's greed, that your people should come first. And so this is the quote, this is from employee. This is not the owner writing this letter. So it's real quick, but it says, we totally understand how it sounds when we say profit first, but it's never meant over people. Profit first is a cash management method that ensures you put a percentage of your earnings into a designated profit account to ensure that your business stays profitable and sustainable. This company has been the most family friendly of any that I have ever worked for. The first that has said that they are family first and actually means it. But our goal is to eradicate entrepreneurial poverty and to make that happen, we have to convince people to pay themselves first. So uh, it's interesting that that employee just took it on themselves to write this letter back and respond to themselves. It was just somebody, it wasn't a coach or anything. It was a front desk person. And to have that understanding and that letter inspire some of these articles. And this is, I think it's going viral. I'm, I'm, we'll see whether it's going viral, but it's, it's come out. Well, um, it's pretty, pretty meaningful to me. When but contractors, I'm sure it's all businesses, but contractors start a business, that's their baby. They sacrifice for it to help it grow and neglect themselves. And then as a contractor gets older and realizes that they needed to tuck money away for their retirement, then they take more money out of the company. And I think the great thing about the profit first is that you stress that the management of your overall income includes a profit for yourself. And it's not 80%. It's not some crazy number. It's a workable number that allows the contractor or the owner to pay themselves, pay their bills, support their family while their company grows. I say it all the time. I see contractors that take home less than their receptionists make. And I've said this many times on this podcast, but you know, a lot of business owners are just like me for the first several years of my businesses. I would plow all my profits back in. Uh, there are obviously stories where there are owners that take way too much and they drain their companies out, but the vast majority of contractors, small business owners in general, they keep plowing the profits back in and they don't learn to build a sustainable business, a healthy business that can support them first, and then they can take care of their employees. Yeah. It's great. And you just said it. Some people do take too much money. They just don't know what it is. 
Profit First has those standard percentages that people should take out of what they're making. So it's actually a guardrail on a contractor, if you're an employee, on the business owner taking too much money out. Because when they take too much money out, they probably don't realize they're taking too much money out. They just drive by the car dealership and they, oh, they really want that truck. So their emotion takes over and they don't really have anything except for looking at their bank account. And they're like, well, there's a hundred thousand dollars in there. Let me go buy that truck. And it may not be allocated for that. So when you have these guardrails on your account, you have the amount of money set aside in, in these different bank accounts. That's the right amount to take. And there's a psychological aspect to this that actually makes you enjoy taking that money out better because you don't have to worry about feeling guilty because one day you do go to that car dealership and you buy it and you feel excited about it well the next day you might feel guilty if you know that has been a the correct percentage and you're living within that percentage you feel so much better about spending that money and you can enjoy it more but my point in this part of the conversation was it not only gives them the money, the wage, like Wade's talking about, that they should earn so you have a healthy owner. It also puts a guardrail on them from taking too much money out because a lot of people that haven't read the book or they aren't doing it don't realize that the owner has his owner's pay. And that's a separate account from the profit. So the owner gets paid for what he's doing there, but then there's a profit for the company that the investors, the owner as an investor, or maybe there are investors that don't work there. They take that. So that's the profit first that we're actually talking about. And then we can talk about now, what do you, if you're doing that, what can you do with this money? What are the benefits of having this? A lot of people equated to the corporate greed. And right now the statistics say there's about 32 million small businesses in the U S and they provide almost half of the private employment in the, this country. And small business owners are what built this country. And that's what sustains this country. And a lot of people that are employees, they think that the owner is getting rich. And I haven't found any direct studies on this, but I did look up one that sort of seemed to indicate what I believe is that 2019 Economic Policy Institute report that basically looked at what a owner did in the company and then equated that to somebody working for somebody else. And they tended to make about $15,000 more. Now, I don't know really what, if, how accurate that is, but I know that's true. And a lot of the employees out there, they don't realize how and much the owner is struggling. That. You just said they only make $15,000 more on average than that. I think that's a huge point that people, it actually even surprises me. <laughs> and I'm part well, of like I said, it was not a direct correlation, but that, that's what we were trying to figure out with that. Yeah, that's a great point because now that you say that, it's not surprising at all because there are so many owners that are making less than the employees that even balance out those owners that do make millions of dollars. So right. uh, it's... That's really interesting because you're really kind of looking for the median, not the average, the typical owner and what he makes rather than that. And this article, we're talking about how does it feel working for an owner that can't pay his mortgage? Well, he doesn't know that. That's the thing. And they don't realize that. But what I have seen, I implemented my business about five years ago, and I've helped several contractors put that in theirs. And the turnaround when they apply it properly is amazing. And I've seen some people do exactly what I've done is that the more we grow, the more benefits I can provide to them. I, in particular, changed my simple IRA plan to having a 401k profit sharing this year, just so that I could give more to my employees because they take such great care of me. And I've seen several contractors being able to do that because they're more profitable. That's great. Because what do you, let's talk, what do you do with the money? That's one thing you do with the money. Because when people hear profit, they think that means going in buying a boat or going in buying a car. So profit in the company, you got to do something with it. It can be cash reserves. I think we have a list here in this article that we were talking about. And the first one, like you just said, profit sharing with employees. That's one of the first things that you do 
with the profit account that you've got. You split it between the owner and the employees typically. And then the second one that I just mentioned is vaulting up your cash reserves so you can be able to stay in business and keep those employees working when we do go through a downturn or maybe I know we've had a lot of other conversations when you don't get that receivable that you were counting on doing. You've got a little bit of cash in there for a rainy day. And let's say I'll just finish going down here, the capital improvements. How do you do that for your company How do, in, that might be buying new equipment, might be buildings, maybe something. Yeah, I guess for us, it's typically equipment in the contract. Well, that's where I was going to go with that. Yeah, talk about that for a minute. I think, you know, business owners, we all say, hey, we want to plow the money back in and one day it's going to pay off for us one day. So we're going to buy this equipment. We justify it in our brain, but we never end up taking what we should. We never learn to run a sustainable business. And when you continually go buying that new truck at the end of the year, just to save on taxes and erode your profit, just needlessly, that's what kills a small business. Oh yeah. That's so good. Let's see. And we'll go into these other things, employee wellness programs. That's another one. I don't see that as much in, the, in construction. Actually, I guess we are starting to see that a lot more. We didn't have that a lot back in my days, but then we're seeing a lot more of the employee wellness and safety programs. Even that's where you can put the progress. And then the big one that we don't get that we do see in our industry are the community programs. How many contractors support a baseball team or some kind of sports team or build a Habitat for Humanity house. So that was our big thing was I was on the board of Habitat for a little bit, but the main thing we did a St. Jude house for about four years that donated a house each year. And that was a huge thing for us. But those community events are huge. And where does that come from? That comes out of profit. Just because you make a profit doesn't mean you're not doing something worthwhile with that profit. Steven, you're being off quiet. Any thoughts here? <laughs> no, I, I get it. I totally get it. Yeah. If you don't have any accounting system in place, you're sitting on a bunch of cash. You don't know where it needs to go. Right. So it's just there. It's stressful. You've got it and you want to spend something, but you don't know if you do, how it's going to affect your bills, your cash flow, and everything else. And just whole idea of profit first that I've always liked is that uh, there's just different accounts you park your money in and out of sight, out of mind, you park your expense monies where it needs to go and also your profit. So you can afford to live and take care of your company. I see so many contractors just stressed out of their minds yep. over this very subject. Yeah. Yep. I tell you, I wish I'd had this for so long. Just, we used to call things benchmarks. That was the closest thing we had to a profit first system. And we'd have these industry benchmarks and these peer groups. And, but I wish we had this back then <laughs> that would have taken out so much stress. I can remember just all the days that I spent working on cash flow projections and everything that we, that this was just amazing. So mm -hmm. the stress part, that's another thing. But the main thing we're talking about is profit first does not equal greed. Yeah, no. yeah This is, the way to be generous is to take the profit first. So it's, uh, it sounds like it's not true, but it's really true. So a paradox, I guess, yeah. our word of the day, paradox. <laughs> wow. I get it. Profit shouldn't be a dirty word. It shouldn't be something you're embarrassed about, but at the same time, in this context, profit is not the concept of it is it's not to drive personal greed. The old corporate culture is my employees work for me only because I allow it. And if they're not serving me and my needs, then I'll get rid of them. And that doesn't work either well, for so many reasons. Yeah. I mean, a small business in this country employs over 60 million people. And if a small business fails, then, you know, they can employ these people. And across the board, about 50% of businesses fail to meet five years. In construction, it's actually 63% of contractors fail to hit five years in business. My message for today is learn to create a sustainable business. Yes, it's not a bad thing for you to take home a living wage, to be able to pay your mortgage and pay your bills and not get behind on your taxes. And that's what this is all about. We can't say it any better than that, Wade. So we'll let that be our last closing statement because Wade said it so well. 
So listen to us here on the Contractor Success Forum because we are here to make you a more profitable business. But what does that mean? That means a more generous business in this episode mm -hmm. as well, can be. So thank you for listening. Uh, subscribe. Uh, do all those things that we talk about. Subscribe to us wherever you're listening this so we know where you're listening. This is great. Thanks. And come back and see us on our next show with Wade Carpenter, Carpenter and Company CPA, Stephen Brown, McDaniel Whitley, Bonding and Insurance Agency, and Rob Williams, the pumpkin plan for contractors <laughs> right here. All right. Thanks a lot. And see us on the next show. All right.